Hi folks, this video is all about the different agents of metamorphism. So first of all, what is a metamorphic rock? A metamorphic rock is a rock that is physically or chemically altered, but in the solid state. Think more of like taffy, you know, heating it up, but, but not melting it. If you melt it, you become an igneous rock again. So this is done in a solid state. So metamorphism takes place when the rock is subject to environments in which it's not very happy, right? Conditions under which it didn't form, especially heat and pressure. In these circumstances, the texture and the mineralogy of the rock is going to change uh, to more adapt to these new uh, environmental conditions. Right? Agents of metamorphism, there's three of them. First, heat. This is always the most important of the metamorphic agents and pressure, right, stress. And then the third, chemically active fluids, hydrothermal fluids, superheated water with ions and everything that's picked up uh, and, and brought around to these metamorphic environments, right? So let's take a look at heat first. This is again, the most important of our metamorphic agents uh, because it provides the energy, the catalyst for our metamorphic reactions, right? Uh, the results of heat, we generally recrystallize minerals to larger, more intergrown uh, uh, crystal structures. Low temperature minerals tend to recrystallize into higher temperature minerals. Example, of that would be carbon graphite and carbon diamond. Right. Also, a lot of these critters make their shells out of calcium carbonate, but the the the, the chemical structure of it, the the elemental structure, isn't very stable, high heat, so it changes to a more stable form of calcite. This is actually called sometimes aragonite, and this is calcite um, uh, in this marble here. Right. How do you increase the heat around a body of rock? Right. Well, you can uh, intrude a big body of magma next to it. That will definitely heat things up. Right. Or you can thrust it down deeper into our earth, right? Two things, again, we cannot untie from each other as we go deeper into our earth. We get higher pressure, but we also get higher heat. We talked about this when we talked about melting rocks a couple chapters ago, right? So heat, recrystallization. Let's take a look at sandstone, uh, our, our sedimentary rock, into our harder rock, quartzite. So here's our buddy sandstone. When we add a little heat to him here, we get quartzite. Let's look underneath a microscope at what happens here. So the individual grains in this sandstone, and sandstone often makes a good aquifer rock because it has lots of pore or void space in it. What you're seeing here, the blue here, that is all open or void spaces in this sandstone, right? So in this rock. So this is a stone, but water and stuff can still percolate and flow through it. The same is not true with this piece of quartzite. So here we can see these sand grains. You can almost imagine these sand grains kind of, you know, going through what's called pressure solution and, and heating and, and uh, essentially kind of melting the boundaries and then reforming them into a solid mass of crystal all interlocked. So this looks more like, you know, like a, like, the images we saw of granite in the in the uh, igneous rock lab, right? Uh, all very tight, you know, much denser now, much more intergrown. You can almost see where some of those individual mineral grains were, right? Individual, you know, sand grains were. Now they have borders have all fused and 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 uh, together, and we have a much more solid uh, piece of stone called quartzite, right? Let's look at pressure and stress, right? So we can result again. Uh, we can apply pressure in two different ways, right? We can apply uh, it in, in what's called a confining pressure, basically the, the, the pressure associated with burial. And this applies equal forces in all directions. As you go deeper, right, the rock just gets more force in all directions. It gets denser, more compact, right? Uh, but we can also then do differential stresses, right? These are unequal forces, the forces we experience at plate boundaries, right? The ones we've talked about in the plate tectonics chapter. So they'll be, you know, back again to haunt you, right? So again, confining pressure, like I showed you this image before, right? We start off, say, as a nice sediment. As we go deeper and deeper and deeper, we get more weight on top of us. We get equal pressure in all directions. That makes it a denser, more compact rock right differential stress however is what we see in tectonic areas right so here's our undeformed strata as it gets squished in here because we have one direction of pressure that's much more intense than the other it's going to respond to that pressure right? so what changes do we see during metamorphism right 
Uh, again, increasing confining pressure results in a harder, more dense rock. This is going to be uniform pressure, right? But this differential stress causes mineral rock is in the uh, rock to realign. So here we see, you know, say before metamorphism in this this uh, granite here, all those those kind of you know minerals are just kind of randomly oriented. They're all interlocked, but they're randomly oriented. As we add enough differential stress to it, those minerals are actually going to remobilize. And here we see a rock called gneiss, G N E I S S. This is a banded rock. Here the the ferromagnesian and non-ferromagnesian or mafic and felsic minerals have actually separated out from each other based on density, right? Uh, and they're going to line themselves up in a very specific direction, perpendicular to the maximum direction of force. So the maximum direction of force being this way, right? It's going to create lineations or, or foliation, as we call it, uh, vertically, right? It's going to do it in the direction of least resistance, in other words. Imagine taking a, a tube of toothpaste and squeezing it like that. Well, which way is the toothpaste going to go? It's going to go up and down, right? Those minerals are going to grow in the direction of least resistance. This is going to cause, uh, cause what we call foliation, right? And then the last of our uh, our uh, 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 important uh, aspects of uh, uh, metamorphism is chemically active fluids or hydrothermal fluids. These are superheated water that have been picking up ions in solution that have been, been traveling through the ground. And as they uh, approach, say, you know, a nice big magma body, um, they're going to react with, with the rocks around, right? This is going to help to recrystallize and uh, can supply new and interesting elements into these areas. So in contact metamorphism, we have, you know, say the limestone turns into marble, quartzite turns into, or quartz sandstone turns into quartzite, right? That is helped not only by the heat, but also by this fluids. Fluids tend to increase uh, metamorphic uh, uh, reactions as well. So next time we'll talk about the two different types of metamorphism.